those workers who would take their money and go and spend it on gin at the end of the week stopped. They took their home, their money, and their families were reunited, but they were also becoming fed and more healthy. Child mortality dropped. Literacy grew as people strive to learn to read God's word. Prayers were answered. People were healed. Church attendance grew. Passionate church attendance. Singing hymns that the people of the time would have likened to vulgar pop songs now. Those songs are in our hymn book. Parliament itself was affected. The slave trade was abolished. Sending children down mines or up chimneys was finished. And the death penalty became restricted just to very serious crimes. And the crime rate fell. One heart was strangely warmed. And then many others' hearts were followed by being strangely warmed. One generation changed a nation. And it's not the only time when God has done something like that. In the 1990s in South Korea, there was a big um, uptake and revelation and renewal in the country. And God really spoke to the Koreans in the Welsh valleys in the early 19th century, 20th century. God spoke out. We see this time and time again through history. And yet when I looked at the BBC webpage on Friday, I looked at the world news, what can you see? War climate change, political corruption. And that's without even scrolling down to the bit that was underneath. If we look at our own nation, we're bombarded of news of political instability, strikes, cost of living crisis. If there ever was a time to call out for God to rip open the heavens and come in and power and strength to show people who he was, to remind people all of the things that he'd done for us in the past, now would be it, wouldn't it? Isaiah prayed in anguish as he looked out as what was happening around him. He prayed that God would come in power and shock the people around him and bring his people back to him. He prayed in repentance and acknowledgement that they'd got it wrong and they'd turned away. At the end of the prayer, God recognises that there were still people living faithfully for him and that God was their father, and they had that promise, that promise from God to be with them to the end of time. God the potter, who shaped our lives. And he asked that God doesn't stay angry forever. So as we come into this season of Advent, maybe we should be praying that God rips open heaven and comes and stands in our midst coming in power and wonder to show everybody who he really is and where we as people and as a nation should put our trust. Maybe just that we shouldn't be happy for things to plod on in the way that they are. John Wesley went out from that small church, and it is a small church, I used to work around the corner from there. 
and came out with his heart strangely warmed. And then through him, we can know that the Methodist movement impacted not just London or England, but the world, didn't it? So this Advent, let us pray that our hearts are stra strangely warmed and that we, as individuals and as a church, can move out into our community with the love and power of God within us so that we can change it, so that we can point back to that God who comes in all power and authority into this world. As we look towards the celebration of Christmas, we've got no better opportunity to talk about that God who's come to visit us. Amen. Let us stand as we come to declare our faith in God together. Let us declare our faith in God. So we say together, we believe. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please sit as we come to God in prayer. The response for our prayer is on the screen. When I say, come Lord, we say together, come down. Come in, come among us, and make us whole. Into our troubles and weaknesses, into the barren places of our souls. Come, Lord. Come down, come in, come among us, and make us whole. Into the war-torn and the refugee, into those who live in conflict. Come, Lord. Come down, come in, come among us and make us whole. Into the homeless and the unemployed, into those who feel abandoned, come Lord, come down, come in, come among us and make us whole. Into the sick and the disabled, into those who suffer in body, mind or spirit, into the bereaved. Come, Lord, come down, come in, come among us and make us whole. Into the poor and the starving, into those who are oppressed or abused. Come, Lord, come down, come in, come among us and make us whole. Into the lives of loved ones, into those from whom we are estranged. Come, Lord, Come down, come in, come among us and make us whole. Into our joys and celebrations, into our work and our achievements. Come, Lord, come down, come in, come among us and make us whole. O Christ, we long for your coming. Hasten that day when those who seek you in every nation will come from east and the west, from the north and the south and sit at your table in your kingdom. Hasten the day when your kingdom will come in all its glory and suffering and pain and sickness and oppression and death will be overcome forever. Hasten the day when we will be resurrected as a great multicultural family and live in peace, harmony, joy and love together in your kingdom. Amen. So we say together those words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we prepare to leave this building and go out into that Advent season as we go home, may the Almighty and merciful Lord, Father, Son and Holy Spirit bless us and keep us. Amen. So our last hymn is Restore Our Own Lord. Please stand. <laughs> light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen.